Evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins first came to prominence with his 1976 book The Selfish Gene, which explores the origins of life. An outspoken critic of creationism, Dawkins' atheist views have put him at the centre of controversy. Today marks the 150th anniversary of the publication of Charles Darwin's seminal work on the origin of species. Darwin's description of the theory of evolution that populations evolve over the course of generations through a process of natural selection is the very basis on which Dawkins builds his thesis. The scientist's latest argument for evolution versus creationism is titled The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Described as Charles Darwin's Rottweiler, Richard Dawkins is our connector of the day. He's questioned biology, religion, even morality, but as Richard Dawkins told me earlier, one thing he will never question is the legacy of Charles Darwin. Dan Dennett, the American philosopher, described it as the best idea anyone ever had. It's such a powerful idea. It's an extremely simple idea, but the amount that it explains is simply colossal. It explains the whole of life the diversity of life, the beauty of life, and above all, the illusion of design. Living things look as though they've been designed at a fantastically complicated level. What, and before Darwin came along, everybody thought they were designed, what Darwin showed is that you can get the illusion of design with virtually nothing, I mean, with a very, very simple idea, using the ordinary blind laws of physics. OK, we want to go through the viewer questions, which we've had an enormous amount for you from a whole range of different people all over the world. Uh, David B. asks, uh, what's the reality for the future of human life on planet Earth? It's a typical sort of question we're getting for you, because they're these huge, broad questions, but they're yeah. questions that you have to I, address. I, I, I get that question all the time. Nobody knows. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not a thing that you can ever, with any certainty, answer. Um, Evolution is a very, very slow process, and so the time scale on which you uh, answer evolution questions is hugely longer than most people can grasp. So if we, you're talking tens of millions of years, well, in 10 million years, the chances are that any one species will be extinct um, without leaving any descendants. It's possible that our species may have left descendants, and slightly more probable than usual because we have the technology to keep ourselves going. So there just might be a descendant of ours here 10 million years hence. In, in which case they might have evolved differently, and by that time, if technology continues, we might have colonized not just the solar system, but maybe even further than that. It's a very, very long time. In which case, we might have diverged into all sorts of daughter species, all sorts of exciting possibilities, but you can't possibly forecast it. Okay, well, from the far distant future to right now, uh, Carlo simply asks, what is thought or reason? Thought or reason, these are things that go on in the brain, uh, processes in the brain, they emerge from complicated interactions between nerve cells in the brain and they've reached their highest point in the human species. Um, uh, Richard Tutoit wants to know uh, what was there in the beginning before the Big Bang because um, we've looked forward and we're looking at now if you look back how can you explain what was before time began? Can you do that? It's very important to understand that this is not a question for a biologist. Uh, uh, Darwinian biology starts about 3.5, 3.6 billion years ago, whereas the universe began about just under 14 billion years ago. Is it a thought you entertain sometimes? Yes, but, uh, but only as an amateur, because I'm a biologist, as Darwin was a biologist. There's a very common misunderstanding that, the, that Darwinian evolution somehow explains the origin of the universe. It's nothing to do with the origin of the universe. The origin of the universe is a matter for cosmologists. The Big Bang is a matter for cosmologists. And, and life didn't begin until more than 10 billion years after the, the origin of the universe. It would be interesting to know what your hunch is, though. No, it wouldn't. Hunches aren't interesting. Only informed science. Only informed science. OK, Paul's written in. He's um, written in about Ray Comfort. He's an evangelical Christian. He's got very different views from you, opposite views, you could argue. Um, he's asking, how can Darwin's origin of species be refuted in 54 pages, it's, which is effectively what Mr Comfort's trying to do, isn't it? There is no refutation of... Uh, Darwinian evolution in existence. If a refutation ever were to come about, it would come from a serious scientist, not an idiot. Well, if he says a flower is based on God's creation, and you say it's through evolution, then he's got a right to that opinion as you much as you. You asked me a moment ago for my hunch, and I said hunches aren't interesting, hunches aren't valuable, what's important is scientific evidence. It doesn't matter what Mr. whatever his name was, Comfort, 
what his opinion is. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. What matters is the evidence. The evidence is absolutely clear. The evidence is in favour of evolution. Okay, and uh, Ken's question is, how does evolution prove there's no God? Well, it doesn't. Uh, you can't prove there's no God. You can't prove there are no fairies. You can't prove there are no leprechauns. You can't prove that Thor and Apollo don't exist. Someone has to come to you and prove that. Yeah, I think there's got to be some kind of a positive reason to think that, that fairies exist. Uh, and until somebody does, uh, we can say technically we're agnostic about fairies. Uh, we can't disprove them, but we think it's a bit of a waste of time trying. And the same goes for God. Uh, and I just want to end with a thought on Charles Darwin. Um, from, you obviously know his work so well, and you get an insight into the person. Um, did he know, did he have a hunch that this book would become so important and so long-lasting? Yes, think? I think he did. I mean, what would he, I'm, I'm wondering what he would think about us sitting here talking about it and the impact um, it had. I think he had a pretty good hunch. I mean, one indication of that is a kind of backhanded one, that he delayed 20 years before publishing it after getting the idea. And uh, the reason for doing that is probably that he knew it would have such an enormous impact. And he was afraid that the impact might be, might be negative. I mean, that's probably the dominant theory for why he delayed for 20 years or 15 or 20 we're still years. Having, it's funny, isn't it, there's these questions. They, they, we're still having the same sort of arguments that he had Well, to day. some extent, that's true, yes. I mean, the evidence is now far, far more strong than it was in his time, and it's massively buttressed by molecular evidence, evidence from molecular genetics. Um, so, uh, yes, there, there is an enormous amount more evidence, but still, pretty much Darwin got it, and Darwin also very, very cleverly anticipated just about all the arguments against that have ever been proposed. Richard Dawkins on Charles Darwin there. We're around halfway through that interview. You may have heard Dawkins refer to Ray Comfort as an idiot. Well, Comfort's uh, group plans to distribute 100,000 copies of Darwin's theories on college campuses with an introduction that takes an evangelical Christian point of view. And we invited Comfort to respond to the name-calling there from Mr Dawkins, and we received a statement from him a short time ago. Uh, we want to read it to you. Uh, if the views expressed in my introduction on the origin of species are idiotic, why would Mr Dawkins tell students to rip them out of his book, as he did recently? Uh, surely he should encourage them to read the introduction to see how foolhardy it is, and uh, that would strengthen students' faith in the theory of evolution.